Let's look at some issues about communities in landscapes, including preferences of species for one place or another, habitats themselves that are rare, how communities change when the climate changes, and space for time succession, which happens in some places. How can we compare communities, how similar they are? There are some non-numerical techniques by simply looking at lists of what species are present at different sites, presence or absence data, not even how important the species are. We can come to the simple conclusion that sites that share more species are probably more similar than those that share fewer species. So if we look at five sites, A through E, ten species, one through ten, Here's some typical presence and absence data. These tables are from our textbook. We can reorder the sites so that all the presences are near each other, at least for some places. And the circled groups are those species in common between two sites. Actually, if they both have a one, that means they have them in common. So we can see here that A and B are more similar to each other than are A and E, and C and D are more similar to each other than either of them are to any of the other sites. There are a number of different indices of similarity. Here's Jacquard's index, which looks at the number of species in both sites divided by the sum of the number of species in the second site only, the number of species in the first site only, plus the total number of species. And also takes into account how many species are absent from both sites. So going back to those former tables from our book, here's the matrix of Jacquard similarity values for those data. For each um, species, there is a value at each site. And you can see with the sites both horizontal and vertical, down the middle, of course they're totally similar to themselves, but then how much each site shares with the other. And of course above that diagonal Below it is a mirror of those values. So as we said before, A and B have the greatest similarity with each other versus any of the others. And C and D, C and D, also these are greater than 50%. So there are a number of numerical approaches, those that have one variable, those that compare one community versus another, then versus another for the number of species per one square metered plot, for example. This is another kind of one-dimensional comparison. And then there are data uh, analyses that look at two dimensions, bivariate data. An example of univariate uh, comparisons would be looking at how species vary along a moisture gradient, as in this figure. In a bivariate example, we might look at two variables like total biomass and foliage height. And in this diagram where mean biomass on the x-axis is plotted with mean foliage height on the y-axis, the three communities have different places in this um, plane and you can compare them also by looking at the Euclidean distances between them. So similarity, like the Jacquard index, is actually a multivariate conglomeration of the presence or absence of a species or their abundance comparing a number of species in a community. And there are loads of these indices. The Jacquard index is a popular one, one I like. But look at all these different, Bray-Curtis Index, Morisita's Index, 
etc., etc. Scientists at FIU have studied the vegetational diversity of tree islands in the Everglades. In this blow up to the right, each black dot represents a tree island with its name indicated. So collecting data for species presence and cover or abundance on each of those tree islands gives a good basis for comparison. It turns out they're quite different from one another, but some are more similar to others than others. So we can use ordination, which summarizes data by combining variables and reducing those data to a couple of axes. Each axis combines several variables. So we lose a little bit of original information, but trying to use all the data in one analysis is the strength of this. With this technique, each species, or you can do it by stand, in this case tree island, would be a single point in the ordination space, and it shows which are most similar to each other or more so there are other multivariate comparisons as well. We talked about ordination, sometimes called factor analysis. There's also non-metric multidimensional scaling, or NMDS. All of these are dimension reduction uh, methods where you look for correlations among the data, making a new data set, having axes that summarize a number of the vari variables describing the data in fewer dimensions. You can use this approach to compare any kinds of sites, maybe comparing disturbed versus undisturbed sites, different successional communities, different stands of the same kind of vegetation over a space um, continuum, or community change over time. I like this figure from our book showing how three-dimensional um, arrangement of spheres, if you shine a flashlight on it, you get how those data are related in a two-dimensional space um, so that ones closer to the flashlight will appear bigger, those that are, excuse me, will appear smaller, those that are closer to the wall will appear larger, etc. So Principal components are coordinates analysis and non-metric multidimensional scaling give the similar results, but not always exactly the same. You can see the two axes of, uh, on the principal components analysis, X and Y, and in NMDS, those are called dimensions, but they both show the same relative uh, arrangement of communities. Maybe the axes had similar variables in them. A and B are closer to each other. C and D are closer to each other. And E is farthest away. These are with the same data from the tables we looked at earlier. So what are those axes in principal components? They are highly correlated combinations of environmental factors, or sometimes in certain analyses, their species. These are what become the principal components that are then used to compare the different sites or samples. And the closer those things come out in the diagram, the more similar they are. With non-metric multidimensional scaling, we get rank orders of differences among samples, and then there are a couple other kinds of things that can be done. Detrended correspondence analysis, which corrects what some ecologists perceive as the limitations of principal components analysis, where um, sites or samples form an arch. This flattens that out. And then there's canonical correspondence analysis, a direct gradient analysis that makes a plot in an ordination space with vectors from the center showing their distances. Let's look at a picture of that. So in this sample, looking at macrophytes or larger plants growing on dikes in the Netherlands, you can see that each of the arrows are an environmental variable. So 
along the sand and clay, these are two different kinds of um, soil components, the different samples, these are closer along this, these axes than sites over here that tend to group that are more with peat. And for some of the samples or sites, it looks like the most important axis is the concentration of phosphate.